this is a nice model of the heart because it shows how the heart is resting on the diaphragm right over here and the part of the pericardium which you can see cut away right over here, this is the parietal pericardium, is actually attached to the central tendon of the diaphragm. This is the thymus gland. Uh, the thymus gland is present right, as you can see, right uh, in front of the great vessels of the heart. The right atrium right over here, when it is collapsed, it forms a fold, which is right over here. And this fold is called the oracle. It's called the oracle because it's kind of like an ear-like flap. So that if you look more closely at it, you can see right over here, this is the oracle, the right oracle. And right over here, you can see a bit of the left oracle. Do not make the mistake of confusing the oracle, which is this external feature, with the atrium. The atrium is the whole chamber. And the oracle is just a little piece of the atrial wall, which happens to form this fold. Between the atria and the ventricles, you can see there is a fairly deep groove uh, this groove is referred to as a sulcus. And this groove, which you find going around the heart between the atria and the ventricles, is referred to as the coronary sulcus. This sulcus right over here, which demarcates the location of the interventricular septum, which is the wall between the right and the left ventricles. This sulcus is the, the anterior interventricular sulcus. Okay, going along the anterior interventricular sulcus, this is the anterior interventricular branch of the left coronary artery. You can also see on either side of this artery, you can see veins. These veins are draining blood from the ventricles. The myocardium of the, the anterior myocardium of the right and the left ventricle. This vein, which you find in this anterior interventricular sulcus, is the great cardiac vein. So you can associate the anterior interventricular branch of the left coronary artery with the great cardiac vein 